Now, one of the things that I did want to ask you about your watch, your recent Washington Post article. I know that you writing that article and people reading it across D.C. and academia and probably in, on Main Street too, read it and got butthurt because <laughs> the whole idea of going to college and, yes. it not, and it not shrinking the wealth gap between black America, maybe college isn't the answer. Right. Uh, what well, blew you away? A, let me let me take a step back. You are an a professional. Yes. You have achieved a lot. You are part of academia. You are in the elite stratosphere, as many people would probably say. And you've gone to college. You have multiple degrees. Right. How dare you no. say yeah. that college yeah. is well, not the audacity. way? <laughs> you have the temerity to say that college isn't the, the way. Unmitigated goal. To shrink the wealth gap. What would you say to people that might have that question for you? Well, what I say is the way we do college, the way black Americans do college is very different than the way white Americans do college. Yeah. And when we talk about debt forgiveness, what most people are talking about is the way white people do college. OK, mm -hmm. so the impetus for me doing that Washington Post piece was to help folks who are talking about, well, what would be the benefit of debt forgiveness? help them understand it would mean the world for black Americans who went to college and you don't know that. Right. So let me explain it to you. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you this in writing this book, the college chapter. So that op ed came out of the college mm -hmm. chapter mm -hmm. and it came out of the jobs chapter. Mm -hmm. Writing the college chapter made me almost stop writing the book. Wow. When I came across the statistic that said 60% <laughs> of black Ooh, students who start college do not do graduate, not I shut the laptop. I said, that's it. I'm done. I'm not finishing this damn book. I don't care. I left the house. I went to the beach. I stayed at the ocean. <laughs> I said, you know, if I don't go back home, I don't ever have to finish the book. So maybe I'll just stay at the beach. Three hours later, I said, okay, you have to go back home. You cannot live on the beach, but you don't have to read anything else tonight. Tonight, you're going to go home. You're going to cook a nice meal and you're going to watch TV and you're not going to do any of this crap. But tomorrow, you're getting back up on that damn horse and you're going to finish the book. That's what's up. It yes, indeed. It took me out. It just took me out. Um, so, yeah, I get it. It's it's like 60% of black students don't graduate, but they leave with debt. And because they don't graduate, they don't qualify for that higher paying job that is the promise of a college degree, you know, putting aside the racist labor market that doesn't yeah, even get yeah. a black guy from Harvard the same thing right. as white peers get. Right? Hey, Put that aside, hey. right? Right, right? You, you, it's just messed up. So this whole conversation about debt forgiveness that ignores the experiences of black Americans is what led me to that op-ed. And and it's something I feel pretty strongly about. No, we, I, we, I do too. We, we we are with you. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Now, the question that I have now is that, given what we believe the Biden administration <laughs> is moving towards, mm -hmm. what outside of your research, out of outside of the statistics that you've provided, what else would you suggest to the Biden administration to try and get this across the finish line? Well, you know. The executive, it's my understanding that he has the power to forgive $50,000 of student debt. Da, 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 da. And he has said he's not going over 10000 And when he said he's not going over 10000 he basically said something really fascinating. He said, well, because, you know, you don't want to reward people who forgive debt for people who went to Harvard or Penn. And his one of his children went to Penn. And I'm thinking, because you're thinking about your white kids. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, black people that go to Harvard, they still have a hard time in the labor market. It's not the same thing. Mm -hmm. And black people who go to Harvard or Yale or Penn have higher graduation rates. There's no 60% dropout. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's this knee-jerk reaction that elite institutions are like the wrong, we should not be helping people who go there because they're set for life. No, they're not. No, they're not. The research shows that when they take their degrees, which are more likely to come with debt 
than their white peers and they take it into the labor market, the labor market discriminates against them even when they go to Harvard, Yale, or Penn. Mm. So this idea that they shouldn't get debt forgiveness because they went to an elite law school misses the point of systemic racism in America. No, no doubt. My wife did attend Georgetown and I'm not telling tales out of school, telling her business, but we know the amount of debt that we have between the both of us trying to get through. So when we initially heard this initiative to try and forgive fifty, sixty thousand yeah. dollars worth of student loan, we were like, okay, that's what's yeah. up. And yeah. then and then the tone started to slowly change. And I was like, oh, okay, we're we're on that bus again. Let's 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 let's, let's strap up and get ready for this nonsense. Go ahead, L. In your book, you talk about the the percentage of white people and black people who own their homes. Uh, yes. I think it was like 73, 73% of white folks own their homes and yes. less than 45 black. Absolutely. That's right. Uh, how are the tax code implicated in that? How does that, because it blows my mind because again, that's the number one of those things. Black folks, we rent too much. We should be trying yeah. to buy our homes. And I'm trying to wrap my mind around how taxes are involved in that area. So first, if you have tax subsidies for home ownership, which we have, you are already by design helping more white people than black people because the majority of white people own homes and the majority of black people are renters. Okay. So the minute you have tax subsidies for home ownership, okay, you're helping white people. Okay. Now let's move to, yes, but Dorothy, surely once a black becomes a black American becomes a homeowner, it's the same thing. Uh, No, it ain't. That's the problem. So now we're going to talk about what happens when you sell your house. Mm. When you sell your house, you can sell it for more money than you paid. Yay. At which point you have a gain. (laughs) And the the law says if you're married, half a million dollars of gain, you can get tax free. Mm. Okay. If you're single, $250,000. Okay. If you sell your home at a loss, no tax break for you. Jesus. Okay. Now, well, Dorothy, someone would say, well, what's the problem? When black people sell their house for a gain, they get a tax-free gain just like black, white people. Yeah, the problem is we live in different neighborhoods. Yeah. White homeowners tend to live in all white neighborhoods with very few black Americans. Yeah. Black homeowners tend to live in racially diverse neighborhoods or all black neighborhoods. And guess what? White people don't want to live in those racially diverse or all black neighborhoods, which means the value of homes in all white neighborhoods is much higher. So when black people sell their homes, they're more likely to sell for a lower gain than their white (sighs) peers, but it gets worse. Black Americans who are homeowners are more likely to sell their home for a loss and there's no tax break associated with a loss. So when people talk about, well, we just need to increase the home ownership rate because this will fix the racial wealth gap. It's like, uh, no, now black homeowners have a higher net worth than black renters. Absolutely true. Sure. But the, you're not going to solve the racial wealth gap with black people buying homes because we live in different neighborhoods. Mm. The only way that would solve the racial wealth gap is if we guaranteed the white rate of return to black homeowners. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Okay. Other than that. And, you know, my argument is, and, you know, I learned about this as I was doing research for an article while I was selling my home in a racially diverse neighborhood. And my house wouldn't sell. And I'm like, what the, the hell? hell? <laughs> and then I'm reading this. I'm like, oh, crap. That's what it is. My house ain't selling because I, I consciously bought on a neighborhood with other black people. Well, that'll cost you, right? Damn. So I learned. And, it, you know, I've never looked at homeownership the same way. So I live in Atlanta. But I don't own an Atlanta. I own a Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts. Okay? Mm. Why? <laughs> because it's really white, white. But in the summer, it's really black. Okay? <laughs> oh, yes, my friend. Oh, yes. Uh, it is. It is the, I call it the black mecca of the north. Okay? okay? In the summer, there's a lot of black folks up there. So I feel very comfortable. But I, you know, I I learned homeownership because where I want to live is around other black people. Right. So if you do that, 
it means your home isn't going to be this great financial investment. But I also say then don't be house poor, right? Don't put all your money in a house. Don't take out a home equity loan, whatever you do. On hold the other on, hand, hold, 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 hold. how do okay? Go ahead. Give him what you just said. Back. You know, don't, don't start with me, okay? You don't start with me. I told my mom about you. Don't start with me, okay? So I'm looking at, I'm listening to NPR actually not even 10 minutes ago, and they're talking yeah. about the largest portion of wealth in the yes. black community is in coming, their homes. Is in homes. Yeah. And how home ownership over the past almost 20 years in black communities or for black America has decreased. Yeah. So how can you gain wealth? If you're not going to buy one, buy a home and then put value into the home to increase its equity. So, okay. <laughs> so first, <laughs> you set a mouthful, my friend. <laughs> so first, what you want to do. So as I said before, black homeowners have more wealth than black renters. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you shouldn't be a homeowner. You should be an intentional homeowner. So if you buy in a racially diverse or all black neighborhood, mm -hmm. you don't want to take out a home equity loan because you are going to minimize potential gain that you might get on sale. And it may wind up causing you a loss. So I'm not mm -hmm. saying don't um, put money into your house. Mm -hmm. Just don't take out home equity loans like mm -hmm. you would if you lived in an all white neighborhood Understood. where the property is continuing continuing to, to appreciate exactly mm -hmm. so this idea and and yes it's true most black wealth is in our homes which is part of why we have this racial wealth gap the system is designed mm -hmm. to screw us right the system for building wealth the only if you want to build wealth and have your home be a good financial investment, then you buy in the all white neighborhood. But here's the problem. Mm. When you buy in the all white neighborhood, your neighbors will call the cops on you. If you've got kids, the teachers are going to target your kids and, and, you know, and expel them because they're disciplinary problems because right, they're just doing right. what every other white kid does. But or when try a black to kid doesn't get kids. out yep. or try to met right. So you, you have what I call some racism triage to go through, Ooh. but it'll be a good financial investment. On the other hand, it's like, no, I want to live with my people, so I have to deal with this crap. But I recognize that means I can't buy at the top of my budget. I need mm -hmm. to save money to put in my retirement account, to maybe start a college savings account for my child, to put some in the stock market. Because what I say, and of course, this requires you to have some money, right? Mm -hmm. And with extra taxes Black people are paying, it's not a whole lot of money, money that, left, that we're necessarily right. going to have. But if there is... The reason I push investing in the stock market is mm. because homeownership is raced. There is no raced stocks. There is no stock that all oh, white people don't want to buy because black people are buying it. The price of the stock market is, is what the price is. And if you are a shareholder, you have a right to get every dividend that every other member of your class of shareholder has. So, you know, it, yes, it's risky. So you don't put your last dollar in it, but you do. You should put something in it because over time, the stock market has outperformed homeownership.